What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started about the Mets spring training preview video, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. If you like my content, like my videos, want to see more, want to get those notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, guys, don't forget, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys, the Mets spring training preview. So as you know, pitchers and the catchers reported in the coming days, the rest of the players are going to come into spring training, start the workouts. Spring training's here. We're ready to go. It's exciting. Feels like spring's coming, even though it's snowing like crazy in New York. But at the end of the day, spring training is back. Mets baseball is back. Mets fans have something to look forward to. And that's a good thing. It's a whole new re regime, new owner, organization feels different, new players on the team, one of the top five players in the game, in Lindor, the Mets acquired, good thing. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about, a little bit about the players right now, and we're going to start with the bullpen. And the reason why I'm starting with the bullpen, because the news about Seth Lugo and the uh, loose body that he had in his elbow that caused pain and then required surgery. He's going to be out at least until May. And that actually hurts the bullpen. And the one of the biggest concerns that I have is this Mets bullpen. I don't really trust anybody in this Mets bullpen. And that's what scares me the most, you know, we can score runs. I feel like our starting rotation is going to be good. But will the bullpen fall apart during the season? And that's the worst case scenario for this Mets team. I think we're solid in every other position, but the bullpen is dangerous. You know, with Familia and Batanzas and Loop and Diaz, you can go on and on. This and Trevor May. It Besides... I don't trust nobody, and that worries me because when a starter is pitching a hell of a game and you got to go to the bullpen in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, do you trust them to hold the lead, to hold down the win for the, for the Mets? I don't feel good about this. We just lost out on Trevor Rosenthal. He went to the A's for $11 million. It's another blow. You know, Jeffries is still out there. That's nice. But we didn't get Trevor Rosenthal. So it's a it's not good at this moment. You know, we lost on Justin Wilson. It's looking like the Mets are focusing on Taiwan Walker or Jake Odorizzi with another starter. But at the current moment, the bullpen is one of my biggest concerns with this Mets team in 2020. I think the offense is going to be good. I think our defense is Okay, it got better from last year, obviously, with Lindor and McCann behind the uh, on this team. But you know, you still got Smith in left field, you still got Davis in third base, you still got Alonzo at first. Those positions defensively could be an issue, but the bullpen, one of the biggest issues when it comes to talk about the beginning of the spring training and what we have to look forward to with this Mets team. If everybody stays healthy throughout spring training and we go into the season with this team at the moment, the bullpen is the most pressing issue. Now, if the season starts and this is the team that goes into spring, goes into the season, the starting pitching is situated like this. Jacob deGrom, Carlos Carrasco, Marcus Stroman, David Peterson, and Joey LaCasey at the current moment. Now, that can change with Odorizzi or Taiwan Walker. But at the moment, that's the starting five as of right now. And LaCasey is our fifth starter. The rotation solid. I'm not worried about that. I feel like Strowman's going to have a really good year. He's on a contract year. I just feel like he's going to be really good. He talks a lot. Talks a big game. He has to back it up. I'm sick and tired of hearing him talk all the, with all the confidence in the world. 
and he didn't really pitch good. In 2019, he wasn't that good. He had a 370 ERA with the Mets. As much as he talked about it today when they spoke to him with the media about people talked about he had a bad season, it wasn't a bad season, but it also wasn't a good season either. It was in between that. And as you, as the Mets number three starter, we need more than that. We need him to be really solid. You know, he's in the, he's in that Noah Syndergaard type of role right now. And that's we don't need him to be, you know, 2016 Syndergaard, but we need him to be what he was in Toronto. He's not old. He's still young. He can be that guy in Toronto. And that's what I'm looking at when it comes to Stroman. Carlos Carrasco is going to be our solid number two. I trust him. He is 34 years old, but I feel like he can give at least two good years for us as our number two guy, depending on what Synagogue does when he comes back in May or June. But I feel good about Carlos Carrasco. David Peterson, uh, he pitched well last year. He wasn't great. But as that lefty in the rotation, I feel like he's going to be very – he's going to be extremely important as a number four starter. And David Peterson, his first start against the Red Sox last year in 2020, he was excellent. And if he gives me something between what he did in Boston, I take that. You know, give me five, six innings, two, three runs, I'll take that every time. You know, he threw strikes. He wasn't a walk machine. That's always good. I like that. But David Peterson – can be that solid number four. I think he's going to be better than what Matt showed the last couple of years. And anything better than Matt's at this moment is really good. But I do I do like David Peterson. I think he's going to surprise some people this year. I think he's going to be extremely solid and pitch well for this Mets team. Joey LaCasey, you know, another lefty. I like him. It was a decent move by the Mets. It was a little surprising move with the three-team deal. But you know what? He can start, he can go in the bullpen, but at the moment he's in the bullpen, he's in the starting rotation. And that's why the fifth starter and this bullpen is a little shaky at this moment. The Mets had opportunities to address this bullpen, but all they did was Trevor May and loop. So I don't really trust the bullpen. And with Locasi right now being the fifth starter, he's not in the bullpen as that next lefty. So I'm hoping that the Mets can probably get Tyrone Walker and Jake Odorizzi in the coming days so we can put him as the fifth fifth starter. It can help us out. Lucchese can go to the bullpen, make the bullpen a little bit more stronger and help out the bullpen. That is the weakness of this team. And that's what I like, if they can do that. Tyrone Walker or Jake Odorizzi. I prefer Tyrone Walker. He's looking for a multi-year deal. I'd give it to him. We got to stop playing games with this whole money situation and not worrying about, you know, worrying about a bid in war. And all this in already has shown that he is very bad when it comes to this stuff. He doesn't like to go to a bid in war. He struggles with signing guys in free agency on the top guys that he wants or tries to get. He always had that issue. He's a good guy when it comes to trades, but we need time on Walker and we need. We need Jake Odorizzi. We need one of the two. If we strike out on both of them, this is going to be a problem with this Mets team because there's no guarantee when Syndergaard comes back, he's going to be the Syndergaard of old, at least for the first couple of months until he gets his groove back and he gets you know acclimated back into baseball every fifth day and starting every fifth day. That's the issue that I'm having right now. The bullpen, major issue. The fifth starter is shaky at the moment. You know, it is the fifth starter. I get that. But when you're trying to have aspirations with this team to be a a big team in the National League, you got to have, be solid all around. You know, we got to be one of the, we're, we're I say the top five team in the National League, but a lot of things can go wrong. And at this moment, I do feel that we're the second best team in the NL East. And that's the biggest issue when it comes to the Mets is that the bullpen can hurt this team in the season. And that's a big concern. When it comes to the lineup, 
I love this lineup. You no, know, you could do a lot of things with Nimmo. You can McNeil, Lindor, you know, that could possibly lead off. I expect Lindor to be in the middle of this lineup, three, four, five, somewhere around there. And McNeil and Nimmo, one, two. That's great. I, I feel like we got we got speed finally. We got contact guys. We got on base guys in in the front of this lineup. I like it. we got the power power guys with Conforto, Alonzo, and, and Smith. I like that. And then you got James McCann coming in. It's it's solid. I like this lineup. And I feel like we're gonna score runs this season. There's going to be no doubt about it. I think we're going to put up a lot of runs. I think our starting rotation is not going to give up too many runs. I think we're, we got a really solid rotation. The fifth starter is shaky, but I do think that the detriment of this team can be the bullpen. You know, I know there's still a couple of guys out there that the Mets could get, but it's not like a promising right now. And it's a concern. And the last thing you want is this team to score runs, pitch well in the rotation, and the bullpen night in and night out, giving up games and giving up Ws. That's what we're not we're not trying to get we're not trying to deal with this again. Do you trust Diaz to close the game? I don't. The person who I probably trust the most is Trevor May, and honestly. I'm not going to stand here and say I watched Twins games and watched Trevor May pitch because I have not. I looked at his stats. I might have popped a couple of videos on YouTube just to check to see how he is, see what pitches he thrown. And it's scary to think that Trevor May can be the trustest guy in his bullpen until Lugo comes back. I don't trust Familia. I don't trust Batanzas. I just don't. And that worries me. Loop, I'm not sure either. And that scares me. You know, we still have Gasellman. I don't trust him either. You know, it's just something that is going to be the biggest issue when it comes to the Mets this season. And it wasn't addressed to anyone's liking. You know, you know, I know Brad Hand was, it was harder to get him because he did not want to come to New York and he wanted to become a closer. He wanted to be the closer and the Mets couldn't promise him that, which, which just boggles my mind. Stop. Don't do not give Edwin Diaz the closers role. Don't put that title on him. I don't understand why they do that. He was, he was pretty good ERA wise when it came to last year in 2020, but one, there was no fans in the stands, which I guarantee you helped Edwin Diaz. And number two, even though he had a good ERA, he put a ton of people on base. He just struck out a lot of guys, which is always good. But putting, pe- putting people on base over and over and over again, all you need is that one hit to drive in those runs. And that seems like it can kill Edwin Diaz every time. Sooner or later, you're going to keep on putting runners on base. They're going to score. And in 2019, we know what happened. He was he basically was one of the sole reasons why this team was terrible in the first half of 2019. So the trust level of this bullpen from one to ten is probably like a four. And that's dangerous. The rotation in the lineup, I'm not worried about it at all. We're gonna score runs, we're gonna pitch well in the rotation. When it comes to the standings. And the Mets with Pakoda talking about the Mets can win the division, 95 win team. I'm not going that high. I project the Mets to be a 92 win team. And again, the reason why I say that, and, and that's going at the absolute high because of the bullpen. I didn't before during the offseason when we made these moves and I felt like we were going to get a couple of bullpen pieces that really solidified his bullpen. I really felt like this team could have been a 95, 96 win team, but this bullpen had me lower the projected wins for this Mets team. 92 win teams, I think, can be close to winning the division, but I think we're going to be a wild card team. You know, I would love to be a division winner. But I feel like the Braves are better. And Pakoda 
when it comes to the Braves, they just don't like the Braves. I don't understand that. The Braves won the NL East. I mean, they're a solid team. The Mets have a hard time beating this Braves team. It's been known, you know, and the Braves did sign Ozuna. They got him back. He's a Mets killer. And I think a really good move for the Braves was Charlie Morton. And that's going to really solidify their rotation. And I tell you guys right now, the Braves are going to be a tough team to beat in this NL East. And I don't think the Mets are, are there yet with the Braves. I think the Mets are going to be a wild card team. We're going to have to fight it out to be one of the two wild cards. And the biggest thing and the scariest thing about the wild card, you got a couple of teams in the National League that are dangerous. And there's two teams in the West that are going to be killing each other all year, 19 times, is the Padres and the Dodgers. And one of those teams can win that division in the West. The second team is going to be a wild card team. And that's when the Mets are going to have to fight for the two wild card spots, depending on if there's no expanded playoffs, there'll be two wild card teams. Now we have to face either the Dodgers or the Padres possibly in their ballpark for a one game wild card, depending if there is no expanded playoffs. If there's expanded playoffs, well, that's different, but to have a wild card game and be one of the wild card teams and facing the Padres or the Dodgers, you know, it's going to be a tough task. And as you know, the Dodgers, they even got better with Bauer. And the Padres, they basically made every move known to man this season, this offseason. So the Mets, I project 92 win team, guys. The three main focuses with the Mets, the lineup, I really think is going to be solid. They're going to score a lot of runs this year. The rotation, I think, is very solid, going to pitch very well. Not going to give up too many runs. I feel like they're going to be really good, especially with DeGrom at the top of the rotation. Carrasco is very trustworthy when it comes to being a number two guy. Very solid. Strowman is in a contract year. I just feel like he's going to be good because he wants that big contract. David Peterson, I feel like, is going to progress in his major league career in his second year on this Mets team. As, as the as the one lefty in the rotation, if Flo Casey is not part of this rotation, but at the moment he's, he's part of the rotation. As the fifth starter with Flo Casey, I'm okay with. But I'd rather have Tywon Walker or Jake Odorizzi. But when it comes to the bullpen, the biggest issue is the bullpen. And that's my main concern. It's the reason why I gave 92 wins to the Mets as my projecting projections this year for this Mets team. And they will be a wild card team, in my opinion. I think the Braves are still a 95-96 win team. I just think they're still better than the Mets. And the Mets didn't do enough in the bullpen to make me feel confident that this team can be a 95-96 win team and win the NL East. Do I wish it could happen? Hell yeah. But at the end of the day, the bullpen is the biggest issue, guys. I want to thank you for watching my spring training Mets preview. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. You enjoy my content. You want to see more. You want to get notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, guys. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you guys for your support. And as always, let's go Mets.